we will now move to our first major conversation this morning, and it's nothing outside the significance of today, uh, the Arafat Day, uh, you know, in the life of um, this year's um, calendar. The Arafat Day is the second day of Hajj pilgrimage, and it's the day before the first day of the major Islamic holiday of Eid Kabir. Um, on this day, Muslim pilgrims make their way from Mina to a nearby hillside and plain called Mount Arafat and the plain of Arafat. Uh, it was here that the revered Prophet Muhammad gave his farewell sermon. Today on the program, we look at the significance of Arafat and Il Kabir celebration, and we are joined via Zoom from Burning Kebi by engineer Ismail Chindu Gotomo. Um, we also still have in the studio with us uh, the editor of 21st Century Chronicle, Malem Nuruddin Abdallah, uh, as well in the studio with us. It's a pleasure to have you join us. Good Thank morning, you. Mr. Ismail, or rather, Engineer Ismail. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you join us. Can you please take us through the significance of the day of Arafat and all the benefit that it holds, you know, especially for the Muslim Ummah? Now, uh, Bismillah sallallahu alayhi wa Arafat day is the ninth day of Dhul Hijjah. That is the 12th month of the Muslim Islamic calendar. The Arafat day, as explained by various Islamic scholars in their literature, uh, is of vast significance. One of its significance, the day when uh, the religion was fulfilled, allowed Allah says, Alayyawma akmaltu lakum dinakum, up to the end of the verse, that on that day, Allah has fulfilled, has affected the religion of Islam. That is one. Then secondly, it is the day when Allah Ta'ala answers prayers, the Prophet Islam says, Abdullah du'a'i du'a'u du'a'u yawmi arafa. The best du'a, that's the best prayer, the best supplication is that of the day of arafa. In other words, the prayer, the supplications, whatever, whatever a person prays Allah to give him or her, Allah Ta'ala will offer that particular, will answer that prayer, will offer him or her that particular thing that he asks. Is it also the day that Muslims are being forgiven? Now, this forgiveness is particularly for those that gather at the body of Arafat for the pilgrimage. And the scholars have explained, as explained in the book known as uh, Nur al Fajr, written by of uh, Muhammad Bello, that all Muslims are being forgiven, particularly those who abide by the ethics of Islam on that particular day, on that particular day. Meaning to say that Muslims are expected to fear Allah on that particular day, to be truthful, to refrain from lies, to refrain from rancor, to refrain, to, to, to abolish uh, proud, pride and the other them with the qualities. So it wasn't expected to be uh, humble to Allah on that day. Prayers are being answered the day when uh, Muslims are being forgiven. There's also what is the day when a person uh, fasts, that is for us who are staying at home. If a person fasts that day, the Prophet Islam says that the Prophet Islam says that that fast will erase uh, his sins, the, the sins that are here and the incoming here. So these are the part of the various merits that the day of Arafat has. Um, all right, so uh, let me ask this question now. Um, the Going to Mount Arafat and uh, being there, it's actually a, an integral part of, of, of the Hajj ritual. We've just heard yes. a lot of um, Nigerian pilgrims will, are still here and they are still being promised that they are going to make it to, to, to Saudi Arabia at some point. Today being Arafat, mm -hmm. 
if they do miss this particular day, what mm -hmm. is the fate of their Hajj? Well, according to the flight, the Arafat day starts from down of Arafat, then up to the next down. So if a person could be at Arafat or in Arafat by, say, 10 minutes to down, he or she has, has succeeded in getting the Hajj. And that presence is whether a person is standing or whatever, the presence is the most important. So if they can make it by that, at least by that time, then Alhamdulillah, they have no problem. But in case it feels actually uh, in Hajj, Al Hajj Arafat, the Arafat the, is the major pillar of Hajj. So any person that misses um, Arafat has really misses Hajj. Now, you talked about, uh, before we come to uh, Malin Nuruddin in the studio, you talked about today being a significant day of prayer as instituted yes. by uh, the Prophet uh, Muhammad, uh, peace be on, upon him. And, and you talked about how significant it is uh, that those supplications yes. are made today because of the promise that were made by Allah to the, the Prophet on the significance of this day. As a country that is going through so much, I mean, We've seen the Shiroro attack where we lost over 40 soldiers. We've seen the Kujia attack. We've seen the attack uh, in the church in Owo. We know how vulnerable our cities and our country has become. Zamfara has become a watershed for all kinds of, of attack. The people in Meduguri are also not sleeping with their eyes closed. As a country, especially one with a very significant uh, Muslim following, what kind of prayers should we be offering at Arafat today? What kind of supplications should we be having? you know, for the peace and stability and well-being of our country, Nigeria? Yes. Now, first and foremost, as said by the Prophet Islam, he said, That is, the best of what I said on this day is that there is no day to where the worship of Allah. So this uh, great kalima, this great was, we should be, I mean, repeating it one after the other. I mean, we should be repeating it various times. Then secondly, Amir uh, Mumin uh, Muhammad Bello explained that in that, in that his book, that one of the prayers also is that that, oh Allah, I pray that you guide me against the torment of the hellfire, set me free from being, I mean, among the ones that will uh, be in hellfire. Then, oh Allah, give me abundance of wealth that is of the Lord for wealth. Then, oh Allah, guide me, turn away the evil machinations of mankind and the jinn. So, you see, this part, the all part of this video is very important. That God should turn us away, should turn away the evils of evil doers to ourselves and to our country. We have been saying many times, often, that it is our responsibility as Muslims, as enjoined by Islam, to pray for ourselves, to pray for our uh, parents, to pray for our children, to pray for our leaders, and to pray for our country. Because our, your country, as well by scholars, without the country is without you in particular. So Muslims should be praying fervently for peace and stability of this country and all other countries of the world. So this day, it is very important for us to make use of this opportunity to pray to Allah, to supplicate to Allah, so that we will have peace and stability in this country and the world at large. Now. Uh, well, dude, let me come to you now. Um, let's let's talk about let's talk about the Hajj, specifically this year's Hajj and and the Hajj exercise, and how it has been bedeviled by lots of problems. We just saw a report on um, pilgrims not being able to make it from Kanu. There are lots of other states as well that are experiencing the same problem. The chairman of the Hajj Commission has left, and. We have heard other officials of other states as well. They have abandoned their, uh, their pilgrims and, and have gone as well. So I meant to understand that um, there are some parties, a lot of parties involved when it comes to 
um, Hajj operations. You have the Hajj Commission, you have the State Pilgrims Welfare Board, you have um, private tour operators and, and, and all that. And even some with accounts and CBN and, 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 and all that. Where does the blame actually lie? Because we're, right now we're looking at the Hajj Commission. Are they solely responsible for this? The answer is yes. And the reason is this. National Heart Commission mm -hmm. is the apex heart regulator in Nigeria. Saudi Arabia deals with countries. Nigeria is represented by an Ahakon. All correspondences between the Saudi authorities over Hajj and Umrah is being channeled through Nahakon. Therefore, all policies by the Saudi authorities are communicated to Nigeria through Nahakon. And Nahakon is backed by an act. Nahakon licensed to our operators to conduct heart and Umrah operation. They equally license state pilgrims boards. I'm from Kano. I can't just pick 10,000 pilgrims and take them to Saudi Arabia. No. Everything must be channeled through Nahakon. The problem fundamentally is Nahakon was not prepared. They are grossly inexperienced, but they don't want to accept it. They needed help from the one we saw it. At least I've been to it more than 15 times, and I participated fully in all, all the major components of arts. So I know what it were in the last 12 years and the changes that t took place. The worst part of it, absence of communication. They have a very zero or poor communication strategy. Saudi Arabia gave us extension two times. We couldn't meet up. Even when we have a Saudi airline, as part of the approved air carriers, we had issues in the past. Those the leadership of Nahakon at that time, because of their experience, they equally go to Saudi Arabia. Because up till tomorrow, yesterday, I thought that we should be able to airlift our pilgrims. Do you know why? Because we have Flyners. Flyners is a Saudi based agency. It is not like Asman or Max Air. It can land in Saudi Arabia even if the airport is closed for other countries because it must go back to Saudi Arabia. There are instances whereby we landed in Jeddah, moved to Mecca. We didn't even go to Mecca. Do you know what we did? We went, we went to Mina Straits. We didn't do Hajj Tamatu. -e. That we do Omrah, relax before. Hajj. We do the combine. We do the Iran. You understand? But unfortunately, they keep on lying. I'm sorry to use that word to the pilgrims. We talk of rescue. What does rescue mean? I said it much earlier. In 28, there was a problem. An Indonesian airline was scrambled and deployed to Kaduna to yell the pilgrims. I boarded that flight. It wasn't one of the approved carriers. That is but. Unfortunately, you know, it is Nigeria. Allah Ibrahim, you will just be using your contacts and what if you to be appointed to a position you are not prepared for. You know nobody in the system. Those that have been there, one phone call. In Kaduna, it was an ES, executive secretary. He rushed to the village during Eradua's time. Say, I have problem. I have more than 3,000 pilgrims on ground. I have less than three days to do this thing. The ELA approach for me has issues. You know, that time it, it was even chaotic because allocations are given to people with briefcase airline companies. 
that has been eliminated. Mm -hmm. We had big, big men in Nigeria who have airline companies without even a note. They don't even hire. They wait for Mr. Uh, Sunday's airline to finish his uh, year lift and come and do mine. At the very, they use their position and whatever. But the, the leadership at that time, you know, which brought serious uh, issue. So it was a simple thing. Flyers deploy more crafts with more than 3,000 pilgrims on ground in Kano, for instance. You deploy an aircraft that takes less than 100 pilgrims. Oh, we saw it on the platform. I said, what is happening? They are, we call the command and control. No, this is a mistake. It should be minimum. If you deploy 747, it should be 540. Mm. 737, it should be 360. But it's, it's a no. The aircraft only contains 996,000, 9,600 um, mm. They did it three times. From here to Saudi Arabia, it's an average of five hours. Look at the timing and, and, and what if you. But unfortunately, and even the chairman left. You remember the drama here? Mm. The Niger Pilgrims Board was telling me, no, Mr. Chairman, you can't leave. Can't leave us. But he did. I saw a report that the ES of Kano did not go to the Hajj. Mm. That is in, in, in commendable. You are the pilot. You should be the last to leave the aircraft in case of an emergency or the sailor. But unfortunately, you know, people go for positions and, and, and what have you. And up till now, up to yesterday, when people have even more than uh, half percent of the program have moved to the place of Muna, as in that they will be how? The sheikh was, uh, was speaking. al Haj Arafah, I remember in that time, even people who are critically ill, people who are moved in an ambulance to the plane of Arafah, you have to be there at that time, from the midday to, 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 to around sunset and, and what have you. It's most unfortunate. And I hope people should be held to account. Mm. Um, Engineer Ismail, we are uh, coming back to you. I would like to you to perhaps offer some uh, words of comfort for all of those programs that it has become obvious going by the current circumstances that they would not be able to make it to MENA, let alone be able to participate in this effort. Uh, what kind of consolation do you think the authorities should be offering them? And uh, in your own wisdom, what else can we do to better the plight of people who earnestly wish, in tandem with uh, uh, their fate, you know, to be part of the Hajj, especially the first timers who have made uh, huge sacrifices? We hear from some of them; they sold their farmlands. Um, others have been sleeping in the camp for five days. Uh, others have had to sell valuables. You know, I'm sure uh, cancel other very pressing engagements to want to be part of this all-important religious uh, exercise. But alas, uh, the failings of man and, and, and all of that has prevented them from What kind of words of admonition uh, can you offer them and offer the authorities on ways that we can make life better for people uh, to enable them attain their goals? OK, Obelai uh, Tofik. You see, alhamdulillah, Islam has solutions to all problems. The Prophet of Islam said that that the issue that has to do with a believer is very wonderful. If something good happens to him, he will be grateful to Allah, and that is very good for him. And if something bad happens to him, he will endure it, and that is as well good for him. And more so, it is there in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that if a person intends to do something a righteous deed, and unfortunately, due to one reason or the other, he has been incapacitated, then Allah, Allah will reward him for that good intention. And also, there is uh, you see the kindness of the kindness of Allah. That right? if you intend to perform something good, but you cannot, 
for a reason above their control. Allah will say reward you for what you have intended to do good. But if you intend to do something bad and you fail to do it, Allah will not punish you for your intention. For what kindness of Allah it is. But you see also in the chapter of Hajj, there is what is known as Al-Ihsar, that is facing any failure to perform Hajj. So in case of any failure, the person intends whether at home or abroad, but he or she could still not perform it, then his is just to stay where he could and abandon the journey and hope that next time, inshallah, Allah will make it possible for you. So for our brothers and sisters that couldn't make it for whatever reason, I will offer what the Prophet of Islam has said to us that whether good or bad, as believers, Allah Ta'ala knows our intention. And Allah Ta'ala will walk in Allah Allah does not look at our posture, at our posture for rewarding us. But Allah will judge you based on your intention and based on what you have done. So our attention for those who intend to perform the Hajj, but they couldn't allow to allow knows their intention. There are parables of pious people before us that even for the reason of, 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 of for welfare of some people, they offer all what they have intended to all the wealth that they have amassed for going to Hajj, they offer it to those people who need welfare, who need that wealth for their life and actually allowed Allah rewarded them for that. So this is what I will uh, consult our brothers and sisters with. Allah Allah knows their intention and surely Allah Allah will reward them for their intention, for their good intention, because Allah Allah does not uh, dictate whatever he says he will do. Allah Allah does not, uh, Allah Allah will also uh, reward them and he will fulfill his promise. Gotomo, they're joining us from no. KB States and offering all sorts of supplications to our brothers and sisters who, by the reason of um, failure in logistics, are not able to join their other colleagues at Arafat uh, today. We also join you, uh, Engineer Ismail, uh, to offer supplications for these people. We pray that the Almighty Allah will have mess, show us mercy both here and in the hereafter and accept our ibadah on this very important day of Arafat. Thank you for joining us this morning, and we wish you uh, a very blissful Friday, and most importantly, happy Arafat. Thank you very much. Uh, coming back to you in the studio, Merlin Nuruddin, we have dwelt so much on, on the problem. Um, like you said, once upon a time we were here, things were really messy, uh, but we learned from the mistakes of the previous year and we made things better until the point where the question of airlifting was no longer on the lead of any Nigerian. What, what important lessons are there for us to learn? How can we make the next operation seamless? Especially starting with people who have been outstanding since 2020, 2021, and now we have another major backlog uh, joining that number. So I think <coughs> two things. One has to do with the um, hiring of the people, of the regulators itself. Mm. Experience should count. Mm. We had people who were in that place with more than 25 years experience in heart operation. So everything about hearts. Yeah. But when you when they were replaced by people with uh, experience of less than 5% of that experience, you equally have problem. Two things. Again, planning is key. They just relax. You know, because, uh, like I said, uh, before 2019, well, the, the last time before COVID, you know, Hajj for 10 years was seamless. 
this issue we have we had this time around, you know, were not happening. So they thought that the ear leaf was just taking care of itself. Mm. No. People born ours to plan ahead of time for all these things. So planning ahead of time is key. The third most important factor is sincerity of purpose. Hmm. I don't want to repeat them here. Racketeering left, right, and center. Hmm. Cancellation of visas. Paid for. Replacement of manifest. It's mm -hmm. just, we brought like these delegate elections things into the hard mm -hmm. operation, you understand? Mm -hmm. This is the manifest. You are, your name is here, but before you know, you will be issue a boarding pass. You understand? When we do that, when you depoliticize the commission, it should be a, it should actually be a, a professional thing, you understand? Mm. So you need to depoliticize it. Appoint people with track records who have done it before, you understand? And another thing I think maybe we should do is, particularly the current uh, leadership of the, of Nahako, you know, they should look at Nigeria as one. These are some of the problems we had. Mm. Priorities we are given to some parts. You mm. can't joke with Kano. Mm. Kano is the Kano, Kaduna. They have the largest number of pilgrims. Mm. But look at how they were messed up. It was, if you read something, something it's even saying that something has some regional dimensions or whatever. Priorities we are given to some states. Whereas the Key major states. It's kind of during the normal Hajj before this, Kaduna opt, used to have up to seven thousand pilgrims. Mm. Kano seven fifty or seven thousand five hundred. I want to feel. But you remember how the whole thing they were messed up, and they had the largest chunk of even tour operators. Oh. It's Kano, yes. Largest chunk of tour operators. You remember. But look at how they were messed up. And again there will be tour operators in particular will be in serious mess. Mm. They paid money. Mm. Like you remember uh, pay money to Nahakon. Money was not remitted to the authorities. Most of the pilgrims, intended pilgrims, bought air tickets. So you see the confusion. So by the time they return, there will be all manner of EMCC cases, ICPC cases, police cases, litigations, and what a few. So these are some of the issues. So I hope the government in particular will look towards this thing and address it once and for all. And they should de emphasize politics. Mm -hmm. right. Well, we do hope things get better. And um, next year we won't have these sort of issues again when it comes to the Hajj operations.